There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with the Saturday Reads. I was a little busy yesterday and today I'm going to be busy doing a Saturday Reads. So what have I been busy with? Kenji's and my immigration lawyer is just kind of dotting I's and crossing T's on the um, sponsorship, immigration sponsorship, spousal thing and some a few last little bits of information he needs from Kenji and I and we have to sign and digitally sign from Tokyo and get the get all that taken care of. That's been a little all-encompassing, but for a very good purpose. I don't know that Kenji will get here by Christmas. What's the date now? November something? 10th? Or I have no idea what it is. It's November, I know, but yeah, it'll be soon, hopefully. There are other complications, which I will not get into, that might mean it might be uh, quite a bit later than that, but uh, we're gonna hope for the best for now. Um, I've also been busy being cold, not in my apartment. I'm always hot inside. So despite the fact that the temperature has dropped to average about minus 17, minus 20 degrees for the last week, I've still got the, the patio door open a crack for sleeping. I just need to have a cool room. So I hope I'm saving on heating bills, but it's really cold outside and I didn't have a winter coat anymore. So mom got me a winter coat. And they didn't have my size. They didn't have a petite. <laughs> they didn't have my size. So we ordered it and it got delivered yesterday. So now I can go out and not freeze my titties off. Still working on the uh, editing job for the PhD dissertation that I told you about last week and Patreon is also keeping me delightedly busy. So life is beautiful. I've also had a pretty good reading week. Before I get into my reading week, here is the weekly highlights, including highlights from Patreon this week. If you didn't know, Sean the Book Maniac has started a Patreon account. All the information is in the show notes. Here we go. And this upper crust fellow thinks his son is a bit not masculine enough, so he assigns his chauffeur to take him into the harness room and teach him boxing. And, you know, things, plot ensues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and that could, but that could also have to do with, again, how he's subverting the the trope of the, you know, tropes about Absolutely. the Western, because, you know, we think of the, the man who's, you know, going out to conquer, conquer the West. And that's not what his intention is. He's, he, he wants to go find his brother. Right. Um, and so he's not trying to conquer anything. This is an idea that um, I was inspired by a friend of mine who's a fabulous bookstagrammer. Bernie, Bernie Lombardi, uh, he calls it the book game. He and his, I don't know if he's his husband, but his uh, partner, his uh, other half, Chris, they play this book game when they have, they're sitting around uh, with nothing to do. And they just read passages from books without revealing the books to the partner. And then they, they evaluate them. So it's kind of a mini page 112 thing. And so I'm going to try it here with three books. So I'm going to give you three paragraphs. I'm not going to tell you the title or author. I'd like your feedback. Rank them in from number one would be most interesting. Thing. And any comments you have, put it in the comments section. And then I will reveal the titles. But I'll do a quick follow-up later this week. Here, without further ado, book number one. Nobody cried when Mrs. Farnsworth died. They just talked about her and the milkman. I don't think I ever followed up with what was the end result of the cockroach extermination thing. Um, I don't think they found any in here. I certainly have never seen any, but they have been back a couple times. And they've got these little cardboard boxes that are kind of cockroach traps. And they come in about once a week to see if they've caught any. And I, I really don't think there has ever been any in my apartment. So that's where that's at. All right, so this week, I have finished two, started two, I think that's right, and it doesn't matter, the numbers don't matter, right? Even though I fuss over them every week, who, who the crap cares? Yeah, it was an interesting reading week, let's leave it at that. Um, I, the, the books that I finished, I just finished this morning, so I have just finished A History of My Brief Body by Billy Ray Belcourt. This was a five-star read for me, despite the fact that I was befuddled for and not really quite sure what I was reading for about 50% of it, but the 50% that I did get touched me very deeply and has kind of 
um, opened up all of my really stale, old um, poo-pooing and condemnation of academic writing, theorizing as just beyond the pale and stupid and doesn't have any meaning. This book kind of opened all that up for me. Um, there's still a voice in me that, as I encountered various sentences, I thought, you know what, this could be so much more accessibly written. But that was a very distant, quiet voice compared to the throb I felt as I did connect with uh, so much in these essays. His anger is powerful and articulate and eloquent, unlike mine. I loved reading such uh, profound expressions of how much Canada sucks from a queer indigenous perspective. I can't wait to read more. I am gonna try his novel, not next, like next week, but soon, because I've broken through with Billy Ray Belcourt and man, does he have things to say. That's all I know how to say. And I, you know, quite honestly found that so much of it, I just let it wash over me, not really knowing what he was saying. But I, I connected with the theoretical underpinnings that he delineated, if I can use that academic word, about indigenous joy as a way out of the colonial nightmare. And also, uh, I think I finally get what precarity is. I'm not going to try to explain it to you, but it's a word that I don't even know if I ever heard of it, heard that word. I, I, I remember the first time I heard precarity. I thought, why don't, why, isn't that precariousness? But no, well, precarity, it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a word in academia. And he, he made it come, come, come alive for me. So uh, I said last week, and I'm going to reiterate it, I'm going to be rereading this book maybe as soon as before the end of the year and be consulting it and reading all the books he cites and reading all the writers he cites, not all of them, but quite a few of them, especially the indigenous ones. It was a delight to listen to him read it. I also think it's worth saying that you shouldn't buy this edition from $2 Radio because he has made quite a few changes and there were quite a few mistakes in this, I think that, and so there's a subsequent edition, which is Penguin, and I don't know if it's Penguin Canada or where the hell it is, but it's a Penguin one. I'll put this down, put up the cover for the one. That's the one you should buy, because that's the one that matched his audio reading. And I could see that he had added one or two sentences, but mostly just changed a few phrasings and corrected some obvious glaring mistakes. I think Two Door Two Dollar Radio sucks after this experience and reading trying to read another really awful novel that they put out, so I don't know that I'd ever try another one by them, but maybe I'm being flippant. Who, me? A History of My Brief Body is anything but flippant. I recommend it, and if you're like me and you struggle with that densely theoretical prose, I think you're in for a real treat, but also a real puzzle. And and the other thing that I didn't say is that he does a lot of theorizing and writing beautifully, Profound observations on poetry, and poetry is an answer to settler violence, Just and things that just, the connections he made, ah, yeah, it was really moving. So much of it was moving, and he's got a really beautiful, sexy, gay voice. Get, do it on audio, people. I also finished this novella by Ronald Furbank, Caprice, and I'm not going to say another thing about it because Curtis of Curtis Books and Books and I are going to be having a Zoom chat about it, I think, one day next week, and that video will go up somewhat soon. All I'll say is that I got a lot more out of it than the other one that I'd read, Cardinal Pirelli, the Cardinal Pirelli something book that I found was so densely written that I couldn't really make head nor tail of it. This one, I didn't have those kind of obstacles at all. So more, more to come on this. And I've started to, and I kind of did an oopsie because, uh, you know, I've done very well all year at keeping my current reads capped at the incredibly low number of 15. If you're thinking that's crazy talk, you obviously weren't watching me last year when I think I maxed out at about 27 current reads. So I've been very disciplined at keeping it at 15 this year, and it's gone better. I'm still mulling over if I'm going to play with that number, moving it downward or not um, uh, for, for next year. But anyway, so I started two, even though I was only supposed to start one, because I kind of lost lost track of the number, but it'll just be for a short time. 
one of the ones that I've started is the novel that Eric Carl Anderson and I are going to have a Zoom chat about when we're both finished, all about H. Hatter by G.B. Dasani. And um, <laughs> what the hell do I want to say about this? This one is not difficult language in the sense of the way Billy Ray Belcourt's language is difficult. This is just, it's unlike any other kind of prose I've ever read. It's a, mish, it's a mashup of Indian English and British English and Shakespearean English and American English. It's, it's incredible. I can't tell yet, 70 pages in, whether I'm going to enjoy it by the end, but I'm certainly engaged with it. But it's such a curious prose style. It's quite humorous. It's, is it going to be kind of just a series of anecdotes that don't go anywhere? Is it going to be kind of like Don Quixote, like there's no, no learning or growth? I don't, I don't know. But it's certainly entertaining. I would use the word rollicking. But there's also little embedded potted folktales, and maybe they're real folktales, or maybe he's just fictionalized them to be folktales. But there's just a lot to, to pay attention to and enjoy. Beyond that, I can't say another blessed thing about it. Uh, it was published in 1948. It was the best-selling book in London where it was published in 1948. That year, or one of them, and then it kind of fell out of... Nobody remembered it for decades, and it's come back into circulation. It's very curious. Oh, now I remember. This is how I got... In how I accidentally started reading a 16th book. Oh, I remember now. I told you lovely people last week that I was reading the Patricia Grace memoir. It's called From the Center, A Writer's Life to Kendra Winchester, and that I was struggling with the pronunciation. There's so many Maori words that are difficult to pronounce. Lindy <laughs> left a comment and said, well, you should just learn the Maori alphabet and then you'd be able to pronounce it. Well, I don't have your brain, Lindy. That would be absolutely impossible for me to do uh, in anything less than about 16 months. So I abandoned reading it to her. I said, sorry, I just can't read it to you because I don't want to botch it. That would feel kind of disrespectful to botch all those names that were crowded into every page as they should be in a, in a uh, autobiography of one of the leading Maori writers in the world. And I just didn't, it was going, it would take hours to prepare for the readings and the note taking and stuff to do a decent job. So I said, no, I'm going to read it to myself. So I said, is there anything else on my Skoden TBR that isn't from New Zealand that you'd like me to read to you? And, and she chose this Métis novel that was published in Canada, Katharina Vermette's The Strangers, her second novel. And I have started reading it to her. And I just love the writing. I think it's, I think I'm, it's her second novel. Her first novel, The Break, just obliterated me and I loved it. I think this one might even end up being better, but certainly it has really grabbed me. It's a really tough story. It opens with a very, very pregnant indigenous woman in custody. And when she goes into labor, uh, the way that she is treated and taken to the hospital with her, with handcuffs and stuff, it's, it's a really brutal uh, scene. And I don't know that I've ever read, certainly not read out loud, uh, so many instances of the F word on every line. Uh, but it certainly suited the atmosphere of, of that story. And then we go back to some of her relatives. And I'm, I'm just giving you the broad broad strokes. We're now uh, that woman Phoenix's relations is, is where we've gone now. And it's not quite so many. There's not so, nearly so many F words. But just, yeah, I'm already invested in the characters. And it's a, it's a dark story about how, f how fucked up. The settler state of Canada has, has made the lived reality of indigenous folk. So yeah, it's, I think it's going to be really powerful. Look at that cover. That is Métis beadwork, and I couldn't describe it in any more detail. I bet Lindy could, but it's gorgeous, eh? And uh, Vermet lives in Winnipeg. So that's what I've started. This is going to be a shorter than usual Friday Reads, which is good because I have lots of other book to be things I'd like to do today and reading things I'd like to do today. I'm going to start two books. I'm going to probably wait to start the second of the books I'm about to tell you about until I've got my current reads down to 13. 
instead of right now it's at 14 so I've, I probably will wait so that I don't get above 15 again but anyway it's high time that I get started on this if I'm even going to have a ghost of a chance to finish it in the month of November and I have no attachment to finishing all my Skoden indigenous authored books by the end of November that's not my style but this one from New Zealand Witi Ihimara's The Uncle Story so I'm going to get started on this this week and I will be later this week I will be embarking upon my first reading of a book to one of my bibliophile besties. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the top tier of my Patreon is called Bibliophile Besties. And one of the benefits that those people get is I read a book that they and I agree on to them personally, privately, like on Voxer. Not, I don't put it on a website where anybody can listen to it. It's only to, to them. And one of my bibliophile bestie patrons, Alila, it, and I are going to embark on that uh, reading and listening project this week. And we have chosen, and this also aligns with the wonderful Bob the Booker's Er November Happening by Annie Erno, translated from the French by Tanya Leslie. I hesitate to call it, is it a novel? Is it a, me is it a memoir with Annie or no? Does anyone ever really completely know the answer to that question? You may know, but I, I don't know. I think the premise of this is that uh, it's about her as a 23 year old single woman who becomes pregnant. And I'm going to be reading it to Alina on Facebook Messenger starting later this week. It's gonna be my first Annie or no, so I'm very excited. And I believe it's also Alina's first Annie Erno. So that's what's going on. I hope you're staying warm wherever you are. And I hope you're reading some good stuff. Thanks for watching. Oh.